Welcome to another technical video from defaultreview.co.uk. Today we're going to be discussing SNMP configuration of a little bit of background and um, maybe ask you some questions at the end and um, if you guys can give me some feedback that'd be great. So um, what is SNMP first of all? Another acronym and um, we love those don't we? So SNMP Simple Network Management Protocol it's been around since the late 80s uh, with version 1. Uh, we use it to manage networked devices and what do I mean by that? So out there you guys have got routers, switches, firewalls, hosts and on those devices you'll have a process, well you'll have the ability to run a process um, almost certainly called SNMP and SNMP will run as a daemon on the box it will run on UDP port 161 and you can pull it and you can receive traps from it. What do I mean by that? So you've out, out there you've got this device, you've got it running SNMP and you want to, um, the, the, whole, the whole idea behind SNMP is to get management information from remote devices. So you as, a, as an administrator you want to get, get things like um, how, how busy the network interface is, how high the CPU is, that sort of thing of a remote router, let's just use a router. So you're going to set up um, a PC um, or a server, you know, some kind of host on your network. You're going to put some software on it. Uh, that's the SNMP um, uh, collection agent on it, and you're going to point that at a remote device. You're going to poll it for information. You're going to set up a period of polling interval, maybe like one minute or five minutes. So every one minute, or every five minutes, every ten minutes, whatever period you set, your monitoring station, your network monitoring station, will will go to this. Uh, router on the LAN and it will say, hey, how busy are you? How busy is your network interface? How busy is your CPU? How much memory have you got free? That sort of thing. And um, that's called polling. So you can set up regular intervals for your NMS, your network management service, to go away and poll a remote box and ask it all that information. And it'll do that regularly. Uh, the, other, the other instance of uh, SNMP you've got is traps. Traps are sent unsolicited from remote uh, network devices. So again, let's just say your router out there um, it suffers uh, maybe an, an interface down situation, so um, it's lost physical connectivity on a network interface. And what it can do in that instance is you can send an SNMP trap, or maybe use an arm on. It can send a, a message to your NMS rather than your NMS having to ask it a question. Now, the remote router is then telling your your NMS, "Hey, I've got an issue. Um, this is what I've seen," and um, that allows you to be more proactive um, from a, like a sysadmin sort of uh, administration point of view. And so, with uh, with with a with a trap, what you're basically saying is uh, don't don't wait for don't wait for the NMS poll interval because let's say your poll interval is every minute and you have an interface outage on one minute and one second, you then got to wait 59 seconds before the next poll of that device. So you know, your NMS system isn't going to alarm, isn't going to show any red, you know, down um, for 59 seconds, and that's a whole lot of time. So with the trap, what you're basically saying is. Tell tell uh, tell the NMS about this issue right now, and then uh, and then you're being more proactive about it. And the um, and the trap actually uh, different to polls runs on UDP port 162. So SNMP yet yeah, three versions. Uh, version one came out like I said late 80s, late 88, something like that. And um, then it was uh, then then it was uh, upgraded maybe whatever whatever you call it to version two. Um, but version two didn't actually get to be ratified. There was an RFC out for it. Um, but there was the IETF could, couldn't agree. There was some sort of uh, disagreement on the security requirements. Um, I think the IETF wanted it to be encrypted, way more secure than than, uh, than some other guys. So version two never really got ratified. Um, so what they did in the interim was to release version two C. That's why uh, we've got community there in brackets. So version two C is the one that you'll see out and about. In fact, it's the most prevalent. Um, you know, you very rarely see. Well, in fact, you probably won't see version one anymore. Um, that's that's legacy. You shouldn't you shouldn't use that. And version three, you know, this is the latest version. So I've put secure in brackets there. Version three is all about encrypting um, the traffic, the SNMP traffic. It was all about uh, authentication with users and passwords uh, and all that good stuff. So version three is the latest version. It's the most secure. Um, but there's very few. Um, very few deployments of that. I've not really come across that a lot. I mean, I've seen it in in, play, in like banks and and some uh, some high grade like financial institutions, things like that. Um, I've seen it in those kinds of places and rolled it out. But version two C is the the one that most people kind of kind of go with. Um, version two uh, C though inherently uh, uh, insecure because what happens there is when you your N so let's go back to the previous example. You've got your NMS there and you're polling. 
a remote server and um, when you when you ask it information you, you along with that along with that ask packet you're also including um, what's the community value and that community value is a string it's an alphanumeric string and it's sent in clear text across the wire so anyone with a sniffer out there they can pick up that packet and they can uh, they can dissect it and uh, find the password and once they've got the password then they can pull they can pull the remote router just for you, just like you did, and um, you know it's, it's actually a little bit more more complicated than that. But um, you can also ha so so we've just asked there. So the example there we've got is a, is a read only um, poll instance, but you can also there's another type of read write instance, and uh, so you'd need a different community for read write. But the read write community will allow you to change configuration on the uh, on the remote device. So if someone's sniffing the wire and they pick up that read write. Uh, community string, and the, you've got no other security around that, then you're in for a you're in for a lot of pain. So, uh, version 2C, great, but not very secure. So um, SNMP it includes these uh, these these other two acronyms M uh, MIB, not Men in Black, but um, Management Information Base, and uh, OID um, is uh, Object Identifiers. So the uh, the M the MIBs the MIBs. Um, these are the IETF uh, tree foundations. So you see, we've got four tree foundations there, four, four tree branches, I guess what you'd call them. Um, management and private are two of them, um, but they're the ones that we're going to concentrate on today. So management is the IETF must have um, OIDs. So these are things like interfaces and CPUs and RAM and all that great stuff. Um, from time to time, you'll come across technology that's that are vendor specific. So things like either channel uh, LACP, P8, PAGP, for example. So PAGP, the Cisco proprietary, you know, that would be under a private, that would be under the private tree. So uh, the IOD for that will be there. So uh, so that's, that's, that's that. So so what we're going to do today, let's have a look at this. But basic configuration scope is we're going to configure V2C, because that's the most, mo uh, most deployed out there that I've seen. Um, we're going to have an agent running... Um, on on a router, we've got a 2621 out there, so we'll set up that router, that Cisco 2621, um, to be aware of SNMP and to respond to read-only and read-write strings. And uh, we're going to put some ACLs on there so that we can secure it down to uh, source. Um, and we're also going to be polling that from a from a management station. So there's loads of NMS software out there. I've seen some great stuff. Open source community has some fantastic platforms out there. But today we're going to be using two commercial products. Uh, one from SolarWinds, the SolarWinds Engineers Toolkit, which I swear by, is absolutely fantastic. Um, I can't speak more highly of the SolarWinds Engineers Toolkit, and no, I'm not getting paid for saying that. And uh, there's another product um, from Paceler called the MRTG, and again, I'm not being told, <laughs> not being uh, given any money for this, but the Paceler MRTG, I think that's a great product too. So we're going to use both of those in this demonstration. Okay, so let's move straight on.